This video is sponsored by Clean My Mac. So the M3 MacBook Air. I mean, we can all agree that this is by far Apple's best-selling laptop. But just before I start, I just wanna leave a quick message for Apple. Instead of dropping a new Mac with a new chip every single year, it would be nice to hold back a little and drop a device that's actually worth upgrading to. For example, if you're someone that's coming from the M2 MacBook Air. But hey, it's all about perspective because these yearly releases would mean a drop in price for the older generation laptops. So yeah, let's get into the video. Before I put this video together, I wanted to make sure I've had this laptop for a couple of months before I can give you guys a full comprehensive review. So far, I genuinely think it's arguably one of the best 15 inch laptops for the money. However, the real question is whether it is able to meet a student's needs. Initially, I had the base model and it just wasn't good to use at all. The 8GB of RAM coupled with 256GB of storage were just not good enough and I really wasn't able to make the most of the M3 processor. I currently have the 512GB coupled with 16GB of RAM and so far it really has not disappointed at all. I've been pushing it to its limits and I think it's safe to say that it's an absolute powerhouse. It boasts the latest M3 chip, offering impressive performance and efficiency. With options for up to 24GB of unified memory and a generous SSD storage capacities ranging from 256GB to 2TB. But of course, it does come at a price. I love the smooth multitasking, seamless app launching and swift data transfers making it perfect for that everyday student. Despite its considerable size, it is one of the lightest and thinnest laptops available, offering a long battery life that can benefit students during those long working hours. There is nothing new in terms of colour options, so I opted for Midnight Blue. This supersized notebook has a flat, uniform chassis with flat edges, measuring 13.4 by 9.35 by 0.45 inches and weighing 3.3 pounds, which is slightly lighter than the 13 inch model coming at 2.7 pounds. Opening the lid with a single hand is super smooth as the strong hinges glide smoothly when opening and closing the air, and that really adds to its elegant design. There are two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports and a MagSafe power adapter on the left side. On the right side you'll find a headphone jack which is useful if you prefer wired headphones, or if your wireless headphones run out of battery. I have mixed feelings about the port selection. While I appreciate the inclusion of MagSafe charging, it's disappointing that there isn't another USB-C port on the right hand side, especially since this laptop is large enough to accommodate one or two extra ports. However, I'm not entirely surprised, given that it's essentially a larger version of the 13 inch model, but I do recommend investing in a USB-C hub since there's no memory card slots or USB-A ports. The midnight blue matte finish looks gorgeous, However, it is known to be a fingerprint magnet, so you will find yourself having to clean it quite often. But overall, it is a well-built machine. If you're anything like me, then the big 15.3 inch liquid retina display hits that sweet spot. Coming at a resolution of 2880 by 1864 pixels, along with 500 nits of brightness, that showcase vibrant colors, sharp details, and excellent contrast. Whether you're working on graphic design projects, reading research papers, or streaming videos, the display truly gives you that immersive experience. With its True Tone technology, the MacBook Air adapts the display's color temperature to match the ambient lighting, while ensuring a comfortable viewing experience throughout the day. Although we still have a display stuck at 60Hz, it would have been nice for Apple to include a ProMotion display since it has become a staple on the MacBook Pro for several years now. Once you get home, maybe you want to switch up the mood a little and connect to your external monitor. Unlike the M2 MacBook Air, this one right here has dual monitor support when the lid is closed. It can support up to two 5K studio displays at the same time. These two Thunderbolt 4 ports can simultaneously be used for charging as well as display ports. The keyboard is identical to the one in the smaller Air model, with nice key travel, an even backlight, and a touch ID sensor in the power button. Each key accommodates my fingers perfectly, making typing feel amazing. Also, the keyboard sounds great and is not loud, so you won't have to worry about disturbing your fellow classmates in the lecture.
Also, the 15 inch model offers that extra space on the sides of the keyboard, which pretty much allows me to rest my hands while typing, which is always a nice touch. The trackpad has been expanded to make the most of the extra space. As always, it is precise and responsive. Swiping, pinching to zoom, and other gestures are effortless, thanks to the additional space provided. And despite its size, it's never gotten in the way when typing. For me personally, good audio quality is essential. Thanks to its six speaker sound system with force cancelling woofers, it still delivers that immersive sound that's rich in detail and depth. Whether you're listening to music, <laughs> watching movies, or participating in online lectures. Then came my 90 page senior thesis you'll still be able to enjoy crisp and clear audio at all times. You get a 1080p FaceTime HD camera that fits perfectly with the design of the laptop. The image quality is not so bad, but it could be better. I felt that my face was a little blurry during video calls and its low light performance isn't the best either, but overall it does the job. If you have an iPhone, you can always use your phone camera for an enhanced video quality experience. The 15 inch MacBook Air is equipped with the powerful M3 processor, enabling it to handle almost any task with ease. During my extensive testing, I was able to run over 20 tabs simultaneously while streaming a YouTube video without any lag or interruption. For those of you interested in numbers, I ran a Geekbench 6 test and here are the results. I was able to further push it to its limits by editing 4K videos on Premiere Pro. There was a little bit of lag when playing back the footage, but it still managed to hold fairly well, and it did not overheat too much. The export time for a 7 minute video took less than 45 minutes, and my timeline consisted of a number of layers, transitions, overlays, and colour correction, and I personally think that is really impressive. Lightroom works very smoothly when I'm editing photos for Instagram, and when using Photoshop, there was no lag and everything worked flawlessly. If you're like me and are not a big fan of the smudges, it's important to invest in some cleaning products. But hey, it's also just as good to keep it clean on the inside, which is why I would highly recommend checking out Clean My Mac. I literally use it on all my Mac devices to make sure I'm safe out there. There are always going to be individuals looking for loopholes to attack Mac OS users. This can be done through sketchy email attachments or by clicking on a link in Google search that downloads a file into your computer. The malware removal feature is powered by the Moonlock engine which scans files up to two times faster than before and searches extra thoroughly in locations such as email attachments, external drives, zip archives and even software launchers. The Moonlock engine lets you manage how much battery and CPU power the scans use, enabling quick checkups of the most common locations without affecting your processing power. For a thorough deep scan with enhanced protection, you can allow it to use more battery and CPU power to ensure it examines every possible corner. This piece of software enables me to clean up my Mac, offer protection, speed up my MacBook so it runs flawlessly, manage my applications and staying on top of my files. This is the laptop I take with me everywhere I go and this software truly comes in clutch to keep everything in working order. If you guys would like to check it out, I will leave a link in the description below. When it comes to the battery, the Air series have never truly disappointed. I was able to get over 14 hours of usage when browsing, writing up emails and essays, and taking FaceTime calls, all with the brightness fully up. I was even exporting high res short form content on Premiere Pro, and it still managed to hold up really well, which actually surprised me. To recharge it, you get a 35 watt power adapter that comes with two USB-C ports. You can also opt for a 70 watt charger at no additional cost with the 15 inch model. So despite it being larger and heavier than the 13 inch model, I still think it is super portable and lightweight for an everyday laptop. that can slot perfectly into any backpack, making it super convenient to carry around. When looking at the price, the base model comes at $1,299 and the upgraded 512GB SSD model is priced at $1,499. Now, when recommending a laptop for students, the MacBook Air is definitely the more affordable option and can cater to the vast majority of students out there. 
Also for students, I'm sure you're aware of Apple's educational discount, so be sure to make use of it to knock off a few dollars. Okay guys, so now it's the final verdict. So in my view, the 15 inch version hits the sweet spot right now. And this pretty much leads us on to which spec should you go for, or even which MacBook should you even consider. So now, if you decide to max it out with all the upgrades, we'd be getting closer to the 14 inch Pro. So I guess I'm just going to have to simplify this for you guys. For those of you who are on a tight budget, then I would strongly recommend checking out Apple's refurbished models. Or even better, with the release of the M3 MacBook Air, do expect the M1 and M2 MacBook Air to drop in price. However, for those of you who are not on a tight budget, then you pretty much have the flexibility to pick a machine that truly suits your needs. And it would totally make sense to go for the latest one, which is the M3 Air. Also, for the students out there, don't forget to make full use of your educational discount to save some money. Personally, instead of opting for the M3 MacBook Pro base model, I think the M3 MacBook Air with 16GB of RAM and 512GB of SSD storage is the best one to go for. But the real question is, should you spend a bit more to get the Pro over the Air? The answer to that question will truly depend on your lifestyle and the type of student that you are. If you're someone whose workflow is based around writing essays, going through research papers and emails, then I would say opting for the base model MacBook Air would do the job. But for those of you who are into graphic design, programming or video production, the Pro is a logical choice. Other than that, I think the M3 Air is the best you can get. Also, if a larger screen isn't a priority, then you may as well save some money and opt for the 13 inch model. In my view, given how the world is going right now with numerous individuals being inclined towards transitioning careers and acquiring fresh skills, I believe owning a future-proof laptop is essential, which is why I genuinely think 512GB of storage coupled with 16GB of RAM should be the bare minimum to fully take advantage of its power. And I really do hope that Apple can make the next generation of MacBooks come as standard with 16GB of RAM and 512GB of storage. However, if you do consider getting the base model M3 MacBook Air, prioritise upgrading the SSD over the RAM for enhanced storage and faster performance. But then again, for that casual user, it totally makes sense to opt for that base model. But as tech is constantly evolving, I don't see how base model MacBooks can sustain the power of these chips and fully take advantage of it. I feel like it's reached a point now where if you're not buying the Air with proper upgrades, then it may just not be worth it at all. But I hope this video was helpful for you guys, and I'll hopefully catch you guys on the next one. Take care.